Hello out there in the world of crypto. Well, today with DeFi IoT Latin America, we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about our personal portfolio. We're gonna share with you where we're investing at. We've done pretty well this year. So we take a little pride too in some of the, you know, I wouldn't say suggestions because we're not financial advisors, but we've explained where we're going, what we're investing in, why we're certain cryptocurrencies on certain blockchains, and we've actually done well. So stay tuned. We're going to share with you our portfolio today. Don't miss it. So let's uh, take a look at what we're doing, what we've been doing going into this year, 2021. Uh, well, I'm going to keep it kind of brief because okay, I'd like to do it in the next couple of weeks is maybe on, on the Thursdays, start sharing our portfolio, why we're investing in these places, right? So today I'm going to share where we're at, what we've been at this year in 2021, and um, what we've carried over. And then I'll go into, I think, over the next few weeks, start sharing with you, breaking down maybe two or three of these. We'll try to get maybe the top 25 out there in your, if you were, if you would say, you know, our, our blue chips as well as our, well, our altcoins. Okay, so here we go. Let me just share with you a little bit where we've been. Uh, you know that we've suggested, and actually we've done very well, things that we were showing you where we're going, we've doubled, tripled, and quadrupled in profits. And actually, this last month and going into right now, we've actually been able to take profit and be able to use that profit, like I mentioned in another video, to buy hardware. For so we can continue as a company and growing the company and in the mining and producing. And now we're actually going to expand by three people in our company. And uh, we're kind of proud of that. You know, we're not a big company. We've only got, we've got 10, 11 people, 12 people. We've got one on vacation right now for three months down in Brazil because, you know, some girl called him there. And so he had to go take three months off. And we understand that stuff. We were young once. Anyway, let's jump into what we uh, what we do here, what we've been doing. Well, let's go through the list, basically. Obviously, you know, we stay with the blue chips, with Bitcoin and Ethereum, though I'm not a huge fan of, you know, Vatalik. I'm not, just I'll say that. I just don't like exactly where things are going with Ethereum, but Ethereum has a lot of support behind it. I'm still concerned about Ethereum, though, for proof of staking, but I won't go into all that here. We'll break down Bitcoin, what we like, what we don't like about Bitcoin. There's not a lot to not like about Bitcoin. You know, you've got people coming out talking down about Bitcoin. Will it be here in the future? We know that Bitcoin's going to come to the point where it's going to stop being mined. And then what happens to it, right? But there's there's wraps, there's other possibilities that happen to Bitcoin. And we can talk about that stuff later. I think we'll go into maybe next week, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and we'll get into maybe a couple others here. Let's go to this list more. So we're in Bitcoin. We're in Ethereum. We're in Polkadot. That would be another area where I think is strong. I, I like their blockchain. I like I like what Polkadot's doing uh, um, on their with their smart contracts. And so, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that too. I mean, we'll talk about those three. The other one I'd like to talk about is helium. And and obviously we're deep in helium. We we like where helium's going. Helium is very aggressive. So helium is another area that we keep uh, investing into. Another area that I like is Quant. Um, you know, QNT, I like Quant because of what I see coming down the pipe. What concerns me, just in brief, is that you have the World Economic Forum creating this quantum computer that their intention is to override the internet completely and control all blockchain and movement on the internet. And that's what the World Economic Forum wants to do. And supposedly that's for our betterment and our health, right? So you're seeing a lot pop up now that Instagram is unhealthy and they're going back after because it's caused people to commit suicides, et cetera. All this is in preparing, and I'm not saying that's not there, but all this is, is definitely blown out of proportion so that it prepares for a big brother to come in now and govern all the internet. Well, well QNT, what I like about them is that they, their intention is to maintain and protect blockchain in its uh, encrypted form so we can have our privacy still and maintain our, our uh, private property. So that will protect blockchains under it from this quantum computers that are coming. And it's not just Microsoft, China, the US, they all have quantum computers too. They're all racing to get in control 
of the internet. There's a lot of information there. You know that. So I like QNT. Um, you're sitting around just under 300 now, a dollars uh, uh, a coin. But I, I think that um, QNT has a lot of upside to it as well. I think when we start getting the, the real threat and the people start really seeing what's coming with the quantum computers and what threat it can do to the crypto world, I think you're going to see a lot more strength going to QNT. So we like QNT. Again, I keep talking about it. I'm like, mana. Well, should I say more about mana? You, we, we jumped into mana a while back. We explained why we're getting to it when mana was really cheap. And now look, we just we hit over five dollars. So now we're hitting a little four range between that four and five dollar range. Is there more upside than mana? Well, you know that with with the whole metaverse coming out and with apparently five hundred games coming out that will be used in this metaverse and that will will deal in types of of crypto or digital currencies. And we need to understand that metaverse is actually digital, not not necessarily crypto, right? It's not encrypted, it's digitized. There's a difference there. So we like, and we're staying with MANA, because we think that MANA might be the coin to buy property in the future. I'm talking here, right? Matic, right? So Polygon. AMP, you know, we talked about AMP before. AMP is still slow. It's slow moving. We bought it an AMP when maybe it was three, four, sitting around six today, um, since. So it still hasn't done a lot, but I we still feel like AMP's got a future to it. So we're an AMP, and it's easy to get into, especially for somebody who doesn't have a lot of money to dump into. You can dump a hundred bucks in the AMP, and 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 you have a lot of um, of coins here. So V Chain, we like V Chain. We've, we've done well in V Chain, not really well. We stuck away for V Chain to take off, but we've actually we've we've um, taken profits in V Chain. Adam Cardano, well there's there's one. We're sitting around two dollars still. You know, up and down in Ada. I think Cardano, for some reason, it's just, it's a horse that hasn't left its block yet. And when it does, it's going to be a very fast horse. And I think you have some internal things going on between Ethereum and Cardano, um, the powers that be behind the scenes. And I'm not sure everybody's playing clean there. You know, there's there's a competition between the two. But we, th we, we really feel good about Cardano in 88. So we're going to continue to take advantage of ADA and Cardano and buy into it. So we're going to continue to buy it. Same with AMP. Uh, ERG. Well, you know, ERG has got... There's going to be something that's going to happen with ERG when Ethereum goes proof of stake between February to June of next year. And you're not able to mine ERG on GPUs. I mean, you're not able to mine Ethereum anymore on GPUs or ASIC miners. What's going to happen is it's that those that, that hash rate is going to be moved into different Ravencoin, ERG, and amongst others. They're going to be moved into on in other currencies that do allow that you can do uh, uh, the mining with, right? So we feel the ERG also has a good reason, and that everything we look for when we're looking for a portfolio or who we're going to invest with is we look for their solution, their reason. So why do they exist? What problem do they solve in the world, especially in the decentralized world? We really try to support more decentralized. Now we're gonna have some of our portfolio that you can say, well, they're not really decentralized. Some aren't right now and some will become, and some we're looking at now are not necessarily decentralized, but their plan, their white paper and the roadmap is to become decentralized. We have to understand that we got regulation coming down going into next year, in the next year and into 2023. It's gonna affect a lot of these coins and these tokens out there, right? So we're trying to get with those that are on algorithms that are not going to fall under SEC scrutiny. Um, because if it falls under in the U.S., okay, it affects, it affects the U.S. citizens. But it affects more than that because it's trickle down. What happens is a lot of the third world countries here in Latin America too and other countries, what they'll do is they'll actually follow suit at what the United States decides. This is a greed play. This isn't a play for our safety. It's a greed play. So if they can see somebody else getting away with it, especially the United States, they're going to do it too. Mark my word on it. Not all, but the majority will. There always will exist someplace. And when it's going to exist, that freedom, that free market is going to exist in those, those algorithms, those blockchains that will support smart contracts that are very flexible to be able to move with these regulations and the changes. So moving on to that, then you can say, well, then we're going to stay, we're going to be with Ravencoin. Uh, Ravencoin, not because I'm a big fan of Ravencoin, but it's something, an option that we're going to continue to work with in the mining aspect of it. 
Okay, so not necessarily something we're invested in, but we mine it, and so we hold some of that has some upside potential to it, but not as much as I see is in Erg. Other one that's kind of new to the game and has taken off a lot are planets. Uh, with Planet Watch, there's another area to invest in. You know, they've basically got little hot spots that read the, your your air control, and so and they they pay for that, and they sell that that information. I think that planets, you know, if you've seen planets grow like 100%, just like in over a month, five weeks. So it's been pretty incredible what you see them growth. And just this year alone, it's like helium, HNT, just this year alone has just taken off. If you look at HNT is, you know, b between the 40 and 50 range the last uh, week or so, right? So uh, that's helium is, is, is another aspect of what we're looking at. We're really bullish on helium. That's really where we're going to put a lot of our attention is at helium because helium is making a lot of aggressive moves to build partnerships and we've mentioned that in our helium news you can catch from yesterday uh, and, and other weeks but we're really if we had to say any place where helium bitcoin we see bitcoin being very stable like gold so bitcoin is really our hedging area right helium is more of our, our of our investing area where we're investing at and holding there um, as well as others we are investing and holding in the you know vet v chain we're also investing in just holding them. most of these most of these we just we invest and hold in Algorand, that's another another blockchain, another you know, that planets actually change on Algorand blockchain. And that's another blockchain that's that's actually a, very flexible in smart contracts. And I see a lot of upside in Algorand as well. And if you go down that, that list a little more, MXC, you know, MXC has not, they have their 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 miners, right? The MXC does. Haven't seen a lot of growth in MXC, but I don't see an MXC is their minor one is very expensive, three thousand dollars for minor, just under two thousand dollars for minor with shipping and everything, over three thousand dollars. It's very expensive. Yes, you can mine Bitcoin on it, and they're going to do another experiment starting well this month, going into December. Then you can mine Bitcoin, but you're talking about maybe mining thirty to forty dollars a month in Bitcoin, right? Not a whole lot. You got to stake some. The stake right now is not very high maybe between $350, $400, you got to stake in order to mine Bitcoin at MXC. Then you got to hold, you got to stake MXC. It's got to actually have 100%. So to get involved with MXC is very expensive to get involved if you're going to mine it. So if you want to invest in MXC, right now I don't see MXC being very, very, very aggressive. And they are, if you, if you, you could say they're a competitor with Helium in, in some areas. And I think Helium definitely is dominating the market over MXC right now. However, not going to leave MXC out. We are not, though, just buying MXC token to invest in MXC token, short of what we need to do for the Bitcoin mining aspect for their miners. Now, they are going, what I do like about them, though, is now they're coming out with a type of NFT, right? And they're going to be allowed to mine Polkadot. That's going to give a lot more value because Polkadot is also another area where we're very bullish in and very strong on. Uh, so th that's just a re one reason why we hold MXC um, because of the money aspect of it. I do see some potential there as they come grow, but I need to see MXC doing more business alliances before we're going to really feel real comfortable with it. Now, to mine them, you have to leave your money there or you're penalized and your miner will not generate 100%. So MXC is something we're just leaving it in. We bought a few of these miners and, you know, we've got three of them up and running. It's all we have right now. And they're producing about $450 a month. But we hold it. We just leave it. But the coin really doesn't move a whole lot. We have since we've been involved with it. We've been right around that 0 .004 area, five four or today, right? So MXC. That's the reason we're involved. MXC. There is potential there. So let's keep an eye on MXC. They do have potential. They need to make clear the roadmap though, and um, big better better alliances going into the future. All right. So summing up, then we cannot leave here without talking about Solana. I have mixed feelings on Solana. We we have Solana, we're holding Solana. We bought Solana when it's cheap. But Solana, I feel right now, is a lot of its buoyancy is due to NFTs. And I think NFTs are a fad thing. However, with this whole metaverse coming out now, and apparently 500 video games gonna come out in metaverse in 2022, you're gonna see a lot more NFTs because a lot of video games are based off of type of NFTs. And you're starting to see people go with NFTs, these, these non-fungible tokens. They scare me because there's nothing tangible about them. 
It's like, it's like, say it's like trading art, but some people are trying to compare that now to maybe Bitcoin. MFT is like a Bitcoin where you can have store value in it. But I don't know. I still feel that's a fad and I'm going to ride out longer. We are playing with NFTs, but we're making our own NFTs and selling them. So we're not necessarily buying and investing in NFTs. If I can find some cheap enough that I think give me a tingle, or one of our, 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 our team here got Tingle, then we might pick up a couple, but it's gotta have to be a cheap price. So we're not real bullish on NFTs at all. I think they're a fad, and that fad is gonna go up and up and up and then come down. We gotta be careful with NFTs. I just didn't be careful. Now, I do think there's gonna be a future because of the whole metaverse coming out. Remember, that's digital though, okay? So there's danger to that too. We, uh, Q-Tech, you know, Q-Tech is another area that we're invested in. We don't have a lot in Q-Tech. Um, something that we're dabbling in right now with Q-Tech, and I think we'll have to get on that and expand why we're dabbling in Q-Tech. Now, you have some others uh, come, that um, we can talk about that we're going to be looking into going into the end of the year, first part of the year. Most of our concentration right now, though, honestly, is in buying hardware to be able to mine and produce. That's where a lot of our focus is right now, though we hold... Uh, we will be moving more into the actual trading and day trading going into 2022. We have funding lined up to come in. In fact, we just got the phone before I did this video to secure some of that funding come in, in the first quarter and then some more in the second quarter and then some more in the third quarter for us to be able to expand in different types of hardware uh, as well as we will be buying. Honestly, we're only going to put about $50,000 into actually buying tokens and coins where we're going to sit and hold and do some staking. Now, I am also very leery on staking, especially with new regulation coming out. It's going to include staking. That needs to be clarified. Congress in the U.S., Biden signed a new bill, this new infrastructure bill. Well, you want to call it infrastructure, but that infrastructure bill has in it cryptocurrency laws, very strict and very ambiguous, very, very vague, I guess we would, um, crypto laws that can be interpreted however they want to be interpreted with the promise that Congress won't abuse it. If you can find in them, then maybe you should find a different YouTube channel because we don't. <laughs> All right. I think that sums up basically where we're at, where we're going, what we're looking at. So in summary, what's our portfolio look like? We put about 25% of our assets into investing. And in that investing, that would include in any type of holding. At this moment, we are not staking. I pulled back from our staking. At this moment, I have everything where it can be moved, or we have everything where it can be moved in and out of cold wallets. We're holding that. Um, we've already seen some platforms are now coming in doing extreme KYC, going back and asking some of our staff members for information months ago before the FATF came up with this regulation that, of, of tracking everything that's over $1,000 that, you know, the, the whole travel uh, limit, right? And it goes international, those are thousand dollars. So platform to really start to implement that. That's a concern as well, moving money, moving your cryptocurrencies around. But I'm sure there's always going to be a way. There's going to be somebody's going to pop up. We hope maybe El Salvador continues down that road. We just got to see, make sure that Bukele actually is, is actually reelected. Hope that he is legitimately, right? So our portfolio is 25% then in holdings and in investing and the rest isn't actually producing, either in mining or dealing with hardware that pays us to develop their networks. Okay, so that's where we are right now. We've got 75%, 25% in our portfolio. In that 75%, obviously we need to, in the hardware, is things to make the hardware become its best. Like in, for helium, for example, you, you know, there's other things you gotta put into helium to actually generate better HNT to do better than your neighbor's doing, so to speak, okay? So there's where we are, 25%, 75%. And going into next year, we're probably going to look about the same. Um, and then we'll begin to put some of that portfolio that we're receiving back from the actual production of mining, if you will, um, in compensation for developing these networks. We'll put that into actually day trading. So we're going to get more into day trading as well. Um, we look forward to that, actually. We're expanding, we're growing. We hope you're enjoying where we're at, why we're doing it. And if you have any questions, please write below. Subscribe, if you haven't subscribed. Remember, we have to, we're trying to hit that 500 mark before December 31st. Subscribers, we've only been up in the air for like a month and a half. 
So we can make it, you know, within three months to 500, we're feeling pretty good. We try to be very honest and everything. We don't lie. We don't try to do, you know, clickbaits there. So we're not going to grow super fast. Like some others, I know they're out there with clickbaits and they grow to 60,000 people, 100,000 people, bam, in a couple months. And I don't think really they have a lot of followers. I see them do webinars too. And I'll go on them. I have 100,000 people. I go on a webinar and there's maybe 100 people. It's not even 10%. And they try to kind of promote things they're doing. So that's where we are. We're going to be also getting involved with certain investments where we can actually have more control over them, like with Helium, for example, and other of these hardwares and allowing people to get involved with us with these hardware devices. So we'll be throwing that out as well. Uh, it's a project we're doing. Uh, so I guess investors not the right word for it, but there are fruits and returns for that. Uh, kind of like what Deeper does a little bit with their stuff. DeFi IoT Latin America, that's where we are. We feel good. We're bullish going into 2022. There's going to be some obstacles. Know it. It's going to be obstacles. And if you're going to get involved with crypto, do your homework, please. Remember, we're not financial advisors. We are here just to share with you what we're doing. Hit the subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Write us. Anything you want to know? Any questions? We're going to go into the next couple weeks to explaining, breaking these down, why we're in them. Okay? So stay tuned. Please share with your friends too. We're here to teach. DeFi IoT Latin America. Until next time.